Allah Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi Alhamd. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, 
Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, wa lillahi alhamd. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dearly beloved jamaatul muslimin, elders, mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters and beautiful children, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Just before we commence our program, just want to do this few announcements. First and foremost, we appeal to all the families will be performing Qurban today. Kindly keep in mind our soup kitchen that feeds more than 5,000 people on a weekly basis. Kindly donate your meat to the soup kitchen, Masjid al kitchen, inshallah. Also, I've been asked to make dua for Inspector Ian Bennett, who for very long used to run the Athlone police station. Uh, he is quite ill and his family requests that we say a prayer for good wealth for him, health for him, inshallah. We have also been asked to make dua for one of our senior trustees, Aji Kamruddin Parker, who was in hospital. He thanks everyone for their duas. He's been discharged, he's home, getting better. May Allah grant him and all sick people, Shifa and Kamila, Amin. We have also been asked to make dua for Zubair Mullah, the son of his Mr. Yunus Mullah, who was in a serious accident, and we ask that Allah grant him speedy recovery, inshallah. I would like to acknowledge and welcome uh, a guest here all the way from Russia. His name is Brother Edward Farito, and uh, he's here to observe the Juma. I mean, he's here to observe the Eid uh, Salah, and we welcome him, and I want him to feel completely at home here, because the mosque, like the church, the temple, the synagogue, are all the houses of worship and the place and the house of God Almighty. So welcome to Brother Edward Farito from Russia. Also, we have students here from the Matthew Goniwe School. We say welcome to them. They are also here to observe and to witness the Eid program, inshallah. And last but not least, this coming Wednesday night, Wednesday evening after Ishai, I will be starting an eight-week marriage class, inshallah. Everyone is welcome. The registration and introduction will be this Wednesday night after Isha'i, inshallah. Before I call upon the Honorable Sheikh Saadullah, I see I've got another announcement. We would like to humbly request to ask for our granny, uh, Safurunisa Parker. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant the shifa and strength, inshallah, amen. Can we just to get the spiritual vibe here and the spiritual electricity going here, just one takbir, and then we'll call upon our speaker, inshallah. Allahu Akbar, Allah. 
هو أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله Alhamdulillah, without further ado, I call upon our Honorable Ustad, Sheikh Saadullah Khan, who is our speaker today, to kindly address the congregation. Faliyatafaddal mashkura, ya fadilat al-Sheikh. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illa Allah, wa Allahu akbar. الله أكبر ولله الحمد إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى أصحابه المنتجبين وعلى جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد وإذ ابتلى إبراهيم ربه بكلمات فأتمهن وقال الله تعالى ومن أحسن دينا ممن أسلم وجهه لله وهو محسن واتبع ملة إبراهيم حنيفا واتخذ الله إبراهيم خليلا صدق الله العلي العظيم الله أكبر 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 لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد In the name of Allah most gracious most merciful all praise is due to our creator our cherisher our nourisher and our sustainer we bear witness there's none worthy of worship but Allah we bear witness we believe in all the prophets and we bear witness that prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is the final of all the emissaries of Allah. As for the shuyukh, ulama, huffad, qurra, elders, brothers and sisters, respected youth, I greet you with the Islamic universal greeting of peace on this auspicious day of Eid, in this beautiful, magnificent house of Allah, reverberating with the glorification of Allah. I greet you, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. This great occasion of Eid, Eid al-Adha, is a unique event. A unique event linked somewhat to the largest annual convention of faith. That annual Hajj pilgrimage to Mecca that continues to capture the attention of the hearts and the minds as we witness the synchronization of actions and purpose of millions of pilgrims, people of faith, at the same place, dressed in the same basic clothing, doing the same thing in the same manner at the same time. Uniformity, tranquility, harmony, and the splendor of simplicity. The Hajj is a highly communal act among millions of people from every part of the world, yet extremely personal, stripped of everything the individual is, makes one feel that you are unique in your own way, yet you are part of a multitude. Unique in that you are in the court of Allah, but also part of a larger community where your titles, your clothes, your provisions, your hairstyle, which distinguishes you, is not there anymore. You are in ihram, virtually in your coffin, in private communion with the Creator, in your personal supplication with the Creator amidst the multitudes of people, an absolutely unique experience indeed. 
Eid al-Adha is also tied to a unique family, the family of Ibrahim, which include Hajar and Ismail, and by extension, Rasulullah and his family. And much of the rites undertaken by the believers during the periods of Hajj are symbolic reenactments of significant parts and phases in the lives of the family of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Nabi Ibrahim, the forefather of our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, referred to in the Quran, Ibrahim, innahu kana siddiqan nabiyya, a most truthful one who was a prophet. Kana hanifan muslima, upright, symbol of piety, submitting to the divine. This is the Ibrahim alayhi salam, the builder of the Kaaba. وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَعِيلِ The one who established on the foundation that was there, the Kaaba which we have today. And by building the Kaaba in Mecca, Nabi Ibrahim السلام, established the global identity, the brand of Islam. With Mecca as the capital of Islam, the center by which we are identified, the symbol by which we become associated, through which we are united. And today, this day, we all pray towards that Kaaba which he reconstructed, and that is part of our identity because we are referred to as Ahlul Qibla, the people of the Qibla. And thus, in that way, our faith is a lasting, continuous continuation of the legacy of Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam. That Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam who announced the Hajj, Allah said to him, as documented in Surah Hajj, وَأَذِّمْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ أَتُوكَ رِجَالًا وَعَلَىٰ كُلِّ ضَامِرِ يَأْتِينَ مِنْ كُلِّ فَجٍ عَمِيقٍ Proclaim the Hajj of Ibrahim, and people will come from every part of the earth by every means of transport to witness the benefits thereof. Indeed, when the Quran refers to the Millah of Ibrahim, essentially is based on the legacy of the model of Ibrahim, the household of Nabi Ibrahim, and Allah instructs us Speak what is truth, manifest what is right, follow the millah, the way of the community of Ibrahim, who was ever true in his faith. So virtually every aspect of the Hajj commemorates the legacy of Ibrahim and his family. The tawaf of the Kaaba, built by Ibrahim and Ismail. So the Sa'i the commemorates the selfless run between Safa and Marwa, the run of our mother Hajar. The pelting of the Jamarat, the Ramil Jamarat, re-enactment of Ibrahim alayhi salam, distancing himself from the enticement of shaitan and the Qurban and Udhiyah, relieving, I mean rather, reliving the sacrifice of Ibrahim. And all of these are parts of ibtialat, the tests that Ibrahim alayhi salam had to undergo, of which Allah says, وَإِذِ بِتَلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمَ رَبُّهُ بِكَلِمَاتٍ فَأَتَمَّهُنْ Allah tested Ibrahim with tremendous trials and he passed his tests with excellence. Which prophet and which person is there who's been asked so many things that are incredible? Extraordinary, demanding sacrifice and patience at a level unparalleled before. Ibrahim alayhi salam was asked to leave his family in the desert. Remember when he went to the desert, there was no zamzam. There was no water at a place which he himself, as Allah documents, inni askantu min dhurriyati biwadin ghayri dhi dhar'in inda baytikal muharram. I have left my family, O oh Allah, stationed them at a place which has no means of sustenance, no water. Hajar had to run between Safa and Marwa, searching for water until the Zamzam gushed forth. But he went there, no water, no plants. This is the Ibrahim alayhi salam who jumped into the fire, was thrown into the fire. And the fire wasn't cool. He was thrown into the fire when the fire was burning. The fire was subsequently made cool. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala suspended temporarily the laws of physics to accommodate Ibrahim. But Ibrahim did not waver at all. This is the Ibrahim for whom Allah said, Qulna ya narukuni barda wa salaman ala Ibrahim. Oh fire, normal fire. The nature of fire is to burn. But Allah suspended the laws of physics as it happens at times in the will of Allah. Allah is what is nature. After all, Allah said, Kun, and the unveiling of nature, the unfolding of nature is the Fayakun. So the one who said Kun can hold the Fayakun as he wishes. And then the slaughter of his son, he was not told that the knife was not going to cut. 
or that a goat will be replacing his son. When he cut, the knife was sharp. When he cut, his son was there. This is the Ibrahim. This is the Ibrahim who's central to the Hajj, the forefather of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who thousands of years afterwards we reenact phases of his life and the life of his family in this Hajj, this largest annual convention of faith. From all of the lessons in the life of Ibrahim Alayhi Salam, there are three points I want us to reflect upon. Because of all the prophets, besides Rasulullah, whose sunnah we follow to the best of our ability, we perpetuate the legacy in a practical way of Ibrahim Alayhi Salam more than of any other prophet. The entire Hajj revolves around him. We have a celebration on this day of Eid regarding the sacrifices and things that he made. We sacrifice as a symbol of Ibrahim alayhi salam on this day, thousands of years after he did it. So there are three points, among the many points I want us to reflect upon, inshallah, about the legacy of Ibrahim. It's not only the doing the rituals of Ibrahim, going beyond the ritual, even beyond the spiritual, to be able to connect through history with Ibrahim alayhi salam, his mentality, his attitude, and then to perpetuate his legacy in a meaningful way. We live in an increasingly divided world, a world evidently hostile to people of faith and people of conscience. We are witnessing a contemporary wave of right-wing extremists, sometimes neo-fascist, authoritarian populists, who have been elected to power in many parts of the world. And this diabolical wave includes powerful people in key positions of authority, all in sync with the bigotry of Donald Trump's government in the USA. Among them, powerful extremists like Narendra Modi in India, like Benjamin Netanyahu in occupied Palestine, like Abdel Fattah Hassisi in Egypt, like Boris Johnson in Britain, among others. And these are people are in key positions of power, having access to key mineral resources of the world and military power, and that with tragic consequences. As we speak, a tragedy unfolding in Kashmir at the hands of the Indian army. Kashmiris now, like the Palestinians, dispossessed, silenced, imprisoned, and dejected without any recourse or access to the protection of the United Nations or any other nation. The least we can do, of course, is not to forget them on this day. Because Kashmir's tragic reality demonstrate how skewed international politics and governments have become. Endemic moral corruption, selfish self-interest of, of, the, of the wealthy and of the monopolists, and we see a manifestation of a world where leaders and their governments have been infested with oppressive, oppressive global politics brought into being and manifested by bigoted leaders who are in power. Contrast that, the situation we have ourselves now as world leaders that we see, with the example of Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam. Also a leader, pioneer of universalizing Tawheed. Prophets came at different places at different times. Ibrahim alayhi salam physically moved from Iraq or Turkey, from wherever he came in the Iraq region. He was in Palestine, Egypt, Mecca. Personally, not only did his message go there, he personally went, established places of worship, and so on and so forth. And all of the places he went to are centers of civilization, whether it be Egypt, whether it be Iraq, whether it be uh, 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 Mecca. All places where civilization emerged. This Ibrahim who built that Kaaba is Mathabat al a place towards which people would be inclined and a place for peace and a symbol of security. Mathabat al amna. Ibrahim is the only scriptural figure who enjoys the unanimous acclaim of all three major monotheistic traditions, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. And the only one referred to by all three as the father, the father of the people of the book. Wajahidu fillahi haqqa jihadi. Wajtabakum wa ma ja'ala alaykum fi dini min haraj. Millat abikum Ibrahim. Strive in the way of Allah as you are supposed to strive with sincerity and discipline. Allah has chosen the righteous, has not laid down upon you any hardship in the observance of your faith. 
the faith of your forefather Ibrahim. In theory, this remarkable consensus among people of faith and his place in history should make Ibrahim salam an interfaith superstar. In a world where people within their faiths cannot cooperate, where people within their countries cannot govern with fairness, it makes him an interfaith superstar, a special resource in these times of conflict, a special example in these times of mistrust. His history constitutes a kind of multi-faith harmony, a case study for monotheism in action, a unifying symbol for people of faith in times of tremendous strife. Exemplary leadership and what it stands for. Not position of authority, but position of influence. Second one is forgiving and caring nature of Ibrahim alayhi salam. There's an incident in the Quran where he receives glad tidings of uh, a child to be born in his old age. He waited all his life, and now in old age he gets a son. And with that glad tidings, he's informed by his angels who are on their way to destroy the people of Lut. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala documents, After he heard the good news and he was excited about this thing, he then went on to argue Argue in defense that let Allah not destroy the people of Lut. Sinful people, mind you, not just the people of Lut. They were going to be destroyed for their sins, for their corruption. And yet this Ibrahim, who never once tested Allah when Allah tested him. He never refused fire, sacrifice son, go to Makkah, never questioned. Yet Allah documents, he stood up and he said, Allah, don't punish the people of Lut. And in fact, the angels reprimanded him for doing so. But it shows in Ibrahim, Munib. Ibrahim was clement, merciful, tender hearted, one who consistently turned to Allah. So the legacy of Ibrahim, we learn from this never allow our indifference, never allow us to show or feel any indifference to the plight of people who are in trouble, whether it be in Kashmir today, or in Yemen, or in Palestine, or Syria, or the Uyghurs in China, or the Rohingya in Myanmar wherever it may be. In fact, we look at his nature of giving, of caring, udhiyah, which is the most visible and entrenched practice by which we remember Ibrahim. What are we supposed to do with the meat? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives four categories of people that he focuses upon. Ad'imul ba'a wal faqir wal qani'a wal mu'tar. Four people, four kinds. Ba'a are those who are troubled, those who are stressed, those who are in difficulties, those who have calamities, those who are refugees. Al-Faqir, those who are so burdened that their backs are broken almost. They can't take it anymore. They're overloaded, crushed under the pressure of loan or debt. Qani' those who are despite their despicable position, the position they find themselves in, the hard, difficult position, they don't ask. Content with a difficult condition, but you know they're suffering, you must find them. They will not ask. These are not the ones who ask. Al Mu'atar are those who are so depressed in such a situation that they actually ask. Though they are shameful, but they are forced to ask. From all of this, we see truly to be middle of Ibrahim will have to emulate his personality, his caring nature, his compassionate nature, his inclusive nature, his thinking of the other. We have to look at how we enhance our social consciousness and our ethical responsibility even in this time and in this country. We need to imbibe the attitude, the vision, the positivity, the commitment, the compassion because the middle of Ibrahim Continues through our Rasulullah to us. Kuntum khaira ummah. Ukhrijat linnas. You are the best of communities. Why? Not because you are chosen. Allah didn't say we are chosen. That is a Zionist concept. We're not chosen people. Believers are not chosen people. We're not chosen. Kuntum khaira ummah. Ukhrijat linnas. You have been evolved for the benefit of humanity. Service of humanity. And therefore, we need to imbibe within ourselves the glorious characteristics of this in Ibrahim al-Halim al-Awwahum Munib, this humble, beseeching Allah, soft-hearted, ever repentant. Last point is the builder of the Kaaba. The builder of the Kaaba. This man calls people to this Kaaba 
Now who is inviting the whole of humanity? Nas. There are no people there. There's no community there. There's no food there. There's no water there. He gets up and he announced. Positive attitude, see? People, he realized, will come from the right, for the right thing in the middle of nowhere. People will come for the right thing in the middle of nowhere. People are still coming, more so than he could ever dream of. As we stand here, over three million people are in, in Makkah from every part of the world by every means of transport, as he called. They come from every part of the world by every means of transport. That land which was ghairi dhi in barren, now the world comes to drink zamzam from that water, from that land. But also makes you realize the change of the reality of the world. Ibrahim built the Kaaba as a manifestation of Tawheed. It later became the center of shirk. Until the Rasul came and cleansed it. And therefore, we realize all it takes for evil to triumph, even in good places, is for good people to do nothing when they see wrong being done. How many of us are silent in the face of corruption in so much of the Muslim world? Are we also aware of the massive wave of change? We're all going to encounter the fourth industrial revolution. We are now entering the phase. The, the phase. We already have the capacity to be directly in touch with anybody anywhere in the world at any time by means of a device in our hand called the cell phone. What people dreamed of in 1950s are becoming the reality and beyond that of today. Artificial intelligence, 3D printing, Merging technology with physical reality, digital spheres with the biological. And this revolution, its scale and scope and complexity will change so much. And the transformation is likely to be unlike anything we have ever experienced in our history. Are we as an ummah engaged, prepared to engage the reality, or are we still debating about issues we've been arguing over for hundreds of years? There needs to be a significant paradigm shift if this Ummah, the Billah of Ibrahim, needs, has to be relevant. Our youth are asking, can age-old religion, can age-old religion and God-centered devotion provide world-centric solutions to meeting the challenge of the contemporary age? Yes, we have to ask ourselves, where am I? Where could I be? Where am I in relation to myself? Where, where am I in relation to my community, to my creator? In relation to my near and dear ones? In relation to the key issues that affects my society? Where am I in relation to the world we live in? Do I have the vision, the resolve, the determination of Ibrahim to make things happen for the better before it even requires to be made? Building the Kaaba in the desert and millions come today to that. Therefore, Allah reminds us, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ دِينًا مِمَّنْ أَسْلَمَ وَجْهَهُ لِلَّهِ وَهُوَ مُحْسِنْ وَاتَّبَعَ مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفًا وَاتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ خَلِيلًا Such is the incredible example of Nabi Ibrahim. His example, his life struggle still serves as a lesson. His sacrifice is still commemorated. His family is still celebrated. His call to pilgrimage is still responded to. The du'as he made, رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا are still recited by us. The structures he built are still places of worship. In fact, even where he stood the Kaaba, the, the stone he stood on, Allah said, وَاتَّخِذُ مِن مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمُ مُصَلَّى Take the place where Ibrahim stood as a place for worship. He was indeed far more than just an ordinary man. More than even a prophet. Allah puts his best when he says, إِنَّ إِبْرَاهِيمَ كَانَ أُمَّةً قَانِتًا لِلَّهِ حَنِيفًا Ibrahim was a nation by himself. In Ibrahim Akana, Ummatan, he was a nation by himself, obedient to the divine, immaculate, immaculately pure and devoutly upright. And therefore we say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad, kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim. Salutation upon Muhammad and the family of Muhammad, as we send salutations upon Ibrahim and the family of Ibrahim. How ironic the world has gone. How crazy have we gone. How warped have we become. Ismail alayhi salam was saved from being cut. And his, Rasulullah's grandson was cut to Karbala by Muslims. The same neck was saved here. The great-great-grandson's neck thousands of years afterwards was cut at Karbala at the hands of Muslims. This is how far we've deviated in the name of Islam. We need to restore 
the positive mentality of Ibrahim alayhi salam. We need to embrace the inclusive culture of Ibrahim alayhi salam. We need to reignite the vision of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Then we can truly perpetuate the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam. May we and our families walk in the footsteps of the prophets. Living and relaying the message of Islam as the Rasul asked us at the Hajjatul Wida, at the final Khutbatul Wida, the farewell, farewell sermon that he gave, the Khutbah. We must do this as the Ummah of Muhammad, continuing the legacy of Tawheed as Millah of Ibrahim. And may we be blessed to be in the company of the prophets and the righteous and their families in the hereafter. We ask Allah to grant the hujjaj who have gone to the open court to be in the area where Ibrahim salam lived and walked, where Hajar ran, where Ismail drank the water, where the Rasul lived, and where he lies buried in those areas. We ask Allah to grant the hujjaj who have gone there, Hajj maqbool and mabrur. May Allah shower his inexhaustible grace and infinite mercy on all those who traveled to his holy open court in the Kaaba, which Ibrahim salam built. May Allah accept their prayer. May Allah forgive them the sins. May Allah illuminate the hearts of the hujjaj with insight. Bestow upon them his guidance. Grant them the strength of their highest moral conscience. Fill their hearts with love and compassion. Arm them with sincerity and dedicated determination to improve themselves, to be a means of value to the universal community of believers and a source of benefit to all humanity. Oh Allah, have mercy upon the hujjaj. And forgive them and forgive us with them. O oh Allah, return them safely and as pure as the day their mothers gave birth to them as we stand in your house here, commemorating the thousand-year-old call of Ibrahim, the legacy of the one whom you took as your friend. Aqul qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Allahu akbar, Allahu akbar, Allahu akbar. La ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, wallahu alhamd. On a chuyukh, elders, mothers, fathers, and youth, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shukran, Sheikh Sadula. Um, a very thought-provoking uh, talk this morning for applying the characteristics of Ibrahim alayhi salam uh, in today's world, tawheed, social consciousness, and compassion. Uh, to our support staff for getting the message ready today, shukran, and Eid Mubarak. Uh, let's remember all of our Muslim brothers in the, in the world that's in troubled lands. We ask Sheikh to make dua for them. Uh, may Allah grant all the Hujaj a Hajj Makbul, Mabrur, inshallah, and a safe trip home. May Allah also grant all the deceased and loved ones a Jannah to Fiddos last year. This Eid, Sheikh Fuad was with us. He's no more. I pray and wish that Allah grants him a highest place in Jannah, inshallah. May Allah also grant all of those who are not too well, loved ones, Shifa, inshallah. We at Mashir al would like to wish everyone here today, as well as the viewers on Facebook, WhatsApp, and YouTube, a Eid Mubarak. Shukran Jazeelan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. If you please can stand up, make some space for the Masalis at the back. Shukran. Sheikh Saadullah Khan will lead us in the Salah. And the Arabic khutbah will be done by my honorable colleague, Sheikh Ismail. Can we kindly stand? Fill up all the softs. Heels on the line. Shoulder to shoulder, please. صلاة جامعة صلاة عيد أدخا رحمكم الله استقيموا استوا واعتدلوا الله أكبر 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 
الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو عالم الغيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله سبحان الله عما يشركون هو الله الخالق الباري المصور له الأسماء الحسنى يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والضحى والليل إذا سجى ما ودعك ربك وما قلى وللآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولسوف يعطيك ربك فترضى ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا 
فأغنى فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وأما بنعمة ربك فحدث الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وذل الشرك والمشركين رب اختم لنا بالحير برحمتك يا رحم الرحيمين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الله أكبر 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 لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر ما أحرم الحجاج من الميقات الله أكبر ما رفع الحجاج بالتلبية الأصوات الله أكبر ما طافوا بالبيت وعظموا الحرمات الله أكبر ما خرجوا إلى منى ووقفوا بعرفات الله أكبر ما تضرعوا في الصفا والمروه بخالص الدعوات الله أكبر الله أكبر عدد ما رموا من الجمرات الله أكبر ما غفر لهم الرحمن وتحمل عنهم التبعات الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده 
لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله اللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين يا عباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي أولا بتقوى الله عز وجل فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق توقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال الله تبارك وتعالى لن ينال الله لحومها ولا دماؤها ولكن يناله التقوى منكم صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين أما بعد يا عباد الله اليوم نتذكر استقامة خليل الله تبارك وتعالى إبراهيم عليه الصلاة والسلام وابنه إسماعيل استقامة الأب والابن واستجابة الأب والابن فاسمعوا يا عباد الله قد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في قرآن المجيد يا بني إني أرى في المنام أني أذبحك فانظر ماذا ترى قال يا آبتي افعل ما تؤمر ستجدني إن شاء الله من الصابرين فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى عنهما بعد ذلك فلما أسلما فلما أسلما وتله للجبين وناديناه أي يا إبراهيم قد صدقت الرؤيا فيا عباد الله هنيئا لمن أسلم للرحمن هنيئا لمن أسلم للرحمن هنيئا لمن أسلم للرحمن يا أمة الإسلام عيدنا الحقيقي يوم أن ننجح في الابتلاء فقد ابتلى الرحمن خليله بابتلاءات متعددة فنجح نجاحا ما بعده رسوب فقال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه وإذ ابتلى إبراهيم ربه بكلمات فأتمهن فأتمهن يا عباد الله الدنيا دار الابتلاء بالطاعات والفرائض بالمعاصي والمحرمات بالأسقام والأمراض فمن أدى الفرائض والواجبات وترك المعاصي وصبر على قضاء رب الأرض والسماوات فقد نجح نجاحا يدخله أعالي الجنات وقد قال الحبيب بالمصطفى عليه أفضل الصلوات وأتم التسليم أفشوا الصلام وأطعموا الطعام وصلوا الأرحام وصلوا بالليل والناس نيام تدخلوا الجنة بالسلام أقول قول هذا واستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم ولوالدي ولوالديكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم اللهم صل وسلم وزد وتوعنم ودفدا وبارك زلالك وكا مالك على زين عبادك وأشرف لبادك سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وصحبه وسلم سلم ورضي الله تبارك وتعالى عن كل صحابة أجمعين الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد لك الحمد يا مولانا يا رب العالمين ولك الحمد ولك الشكر يا مولانا يا رب العالمين فالحمد لله الواحد الأحد الفرد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله فاللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وعلموا يا عباد الله أنكم راجعون إلى ربكم فأعدوا للسؤال جوابا وللجواب صوابا وقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في شأن حبيبي إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحاب يجمعين وارض الله وارض اللهم عن الأربعة الخلفاء الراشدين ساداتنا وإمتنا أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن بقية العشرة الكرام وعن الصحابة أجمعين والتابعين وتابع التابعين 
ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم اجعل حجاجنا حجهم حجا مبرورا وسعيهم مشكورا وذنبهم مغفورا وعملهم صالحا مقبولا وتجارة لن تبور يا نور النور يا عالم ما في الصدور أخرجنا يا الله وإياهم من الظلمات إلى النور يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا وقلوب أولادنا وأزواجنا على دينك يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا وقلوب أولادنا وأزواجنا على طاعتك يا رب العالمين اللهم احفظ شباب المسلمين اللهم احفظ شباب المسلمين اللهم احفظ الشباب المسلمين يا ربنا كلنا ولا تكن علينا يا ربنا كلنا ناصرا ومؤيدا يا رب بالمصطفى بلغ مقاصدنا واغفر لنا ما مضى يا واسع الكرم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وأدخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين عباد الله إن الله تبارك وتعالى يأمر يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكر الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه والله يزدكم ونذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأجل وأهم وأتم وأعظم وأكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر الله